Three million people in the UK care for a loved one and work. I'm Liz Morris. Join me as I talk with leading experts and working carers to find out how we can all balance work with caring for a loved one. Let's start by taking a look at why balance is so important. Actually, it's probably one of the biggest issues for society generally right now. We've got an ageing population, more and more of us are going to be working and caring and if we don't get that support right we end up with a situation where carers are having to maybe leave the workforce when they don't want to and that's a loss to business of great employees but also it's a massive loss to the society uh, and the economy. Do you know it's been calculated that there's a loss of 5.3 billion pounds a year uh, from carers having to leave the workforce because they're no longer earning wages, they're not paying tax, and there's a cost of, of benefits that they might need. So for individuals, for employers, and the wider economy, it's one of the crucial issues that we need to get right. People need a positive life balance for their own well-being. If you're, if you, if you're out of balance, so you're working too hard, you become tired, uh, your health, both mental and physical, can suffer, that's bad for you, it's bad for your family and friends and relationships, and it's bad for the people that you're working for. More than 60% of us will have periods of caring during our working lives. It could be that you're caring for your parent, a disabled child, a friend, or your partner. Every year, there are two million new carers, and about the same find that their caring role ends. It's likely that in your workplace, one out of every nine of your colleagues has caring responsibilities. Being able to balance your work and care for a loved one is something that is increasingly likely to happen to most of us at some stage during our working lives. I spoke again to Helena at Carers UK and her colleague Catherine. We do find that people still are reticent maybe about talking about their caring responsibilities. Sometimes people think um, he can go against them at work. Maybe they won't get the promotion that might be an offer, or maybe even their colleagues will think, well, why is that person taking time off? Uh, so I think the key thing is to say this is a normal thing that affects most of us. Uh, do you know, every year, two million people become carers, and about the same number find that their caring role ceases. So at any time, in any organisation, people are going to be uh, encountering that experience of being a carer. So what can working carers do to find a good work-life balance? And I think there are sort of three solutions to those, if you like. I mean, the first thing is talk to someone. Just don't feel that you have to do this alone. Even if it's first of all talking to someone in your family, to a friend, but also consider talking to someone at work. And that can feel very difficult, but it may be that you've got a colleague that you trust it may be you can talk to your line manager about these issues or talk to a trade union representative, but there is someone you can talk to. And I think the other thing that's really important for you to do is to get practical help when you need it. So, for example, if you're going to be caring on a regular basis and you think it's quite an ongoing thing, it's really worth speaking to the social services department of the local council to find out what sort of support there could be for the person you're looking after or for you. So how can these principles work in practice? And Bashir has got uh, Down syndrome and autistic spectrum. Mm. And my wife was diagnosed with cancer in 2006. Mm. My biggest challenge was to juggle work and caring for two people at the same time. Mm. The important thing to remember is whenever you're facing a situation, you've got to talk about it. Mm. If you're working, you must approach your line manager or your manager and explain the situation as clearly as possible and also offer a solution, what you can offer. Mm. Say, this is what I would like to do and see how that can fit within the business. What made it easier for me was that I have a good uh, circle of friends. I network with a lot of people. Mm. And by doing that, you don't feel alone and you get little tips here and there and that helps you to choose what is good for you, what's not good for you. Yeah. But networking also helps. It gives you ideas and it gives you support. Yeah. 
because you can express to another person who might be going the same situation. And only people who live the same type of life can really understand what you go through. Because people who does not live with a disabled person does not know how it is, really. Uh, my current situation at home is I'm a carer for my wife, Roseanne. Uh, I've been a carer for her since 2001. Uh, she has a number of um, different problems, different health problems. Normally, uh, a caring role can be a gradual type thing, whereby they, 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 they deteriorate quite slowly. Although with my wife, it was a case of one day she was fine, next day she wasn't. So I was thrown, more or less, into caring role overnight. Trying to find the right balance is, is to discuss your situation with your employer, um, to be honest, to, to be forward, rather than hide things and try and fit, fit in with the working practices and trying to manage your, your time at home as well as time at work. There's a growing body of evidence that shows an honest, trusting relationship with your line manager is key to successfully being able to flex work with your other responsibilities. Um, top tips is to, to look at your um, personal life and to try and come to some sort of arrangement whereby you can take that time off, you can be your own person because carers, after, after all, are people too. I have uh, one son, um, he's 18, um, he has autism and last couple of years he, he developed um, uh, epilepsy but um, we're very thankful that uh, med medicine is now containing that. Especially with autism you need um, a good balance in life because routine is the most important thing in um, Sam's life. It, he, he maps his life through routines. It keeps us stress free as well so we, we, can, we can enjoy life and so can he. What are your top tips for a good work-life balance? Planning. Plan like anything. Write everything down and don't take on more than you can do. Do everything, if need be, do it in bite-sized chunks. Increasingly, organisational leaders are recognising the positive impact and need for good work-life balance. I, th I think first of all, and certainly the way we see it, is um, it, it's absolutely the right thing to do. The economic impact of losing somebody um, is huge for us to then fill that gap, so it makes perfect sense for us to support people flexibly um, that do have caring responsibilities. And Rachel Collier at digital marketing company iCrossing knows the practical impact firsthand. Recently my daughter has had quite a serious illness uh, through her studies. So again, um, the company has acknowledged that that would mean there would be demands on me outside of work. That would mean I, I need to accommodate my work and my, commit, my, work, my business commitments um, to eye crossing um, in a slightly different way. And it's always been approached as, yes, we'll find a way and we've found a way. If people can come to work and be their best selves, and they understand how to be their best with their colleagues, then we are enabling people to take that, not only to, to work that way inside of work, but also individually. So it is a win-win situation for, for people in that work-life balance. And where else can you turn for support? When I decided for the flexible working approach, I suppose the legal department of working families was very helpful. I was also a member of Carers UK. So we do a range of things. First of all, if you're feeling a bit isolated and maybe not sure where to turn, then you can give our advice line a call if you want information about your rights as a carer or where you can access help. It might be though that what you're really looking for is somewhere to, to share how you're feeling uh, and not necessarily that you want to talk first of all to your family or your employer. In which case our online forum is a fantastic way of being able to be in touch with people who are probably going through very similar things to you, uh, but to do that in quite a private way. Uh, so please do get in touch with us if you're in that situation and find out how we can help you. I'll leave the last word to Jeff. It was quite funny actually because I think my, my greatest sense of support is the person I care for, my, my wife. She supports me as well as me supporting her. Even though she has a lot of health problems, she is my rock. I think my greatest joy, Liz, is knowing that although my wife will never be ever 
100%. It's knowing that I'm there for her, she's there for me, and we have a wonderful home life. If you are a working carer, or a business leader wanting to support working carers, please get in touch with Working Families or Employers for Carers at Carers UK. Working Families and Carers UK are registered charities.